Hi, dear friends, cultural creatives, and seekers everywhere. I'm Bruce Lipton, author of the best-selling books, The Biology of Belief, Spontaneous Evolution, and The Honeymoon Effect. I'm here just to provide a quick insight into the nature of the COVID-19 disease that is spreading globally at this moment. In the news media, we're being hyped with a lot of information about the aggressive nature of this disease, and specifically that it is a fatal disease. Well, I'm here to try to alleviate some of that issue because it's not really a true insight of what is going on. So before I start, very quickly what I'd like to say is what is a virus? Well, in the biology belief, we define that a cell is actually an information processing mechanism. It's a chip and it's got a hard drive in it. The nucleus has got programs from genes and significance and the cell is like a computer. I say, so well, when looking and understanding nature of the computer is simply this. There's a memory built into the computer that runs the program. But there's something also called a memory stick or a flash drive. And the memory stick is not a, a computer. It has no function other than it carries a memory. And when it plugs into the cell, the virus, or the memory stick in this case, puts its program into the computer and the memory stick program can take over the function of this computer. So what is a virus? Well, the virus is the equivalent of this memory stick. It has no life, it has no metabolism, it's just a protein capsule containing genetic programs that when infecting your cell will take over the function of that cell and cause the replication of the virus. So, what's the issue with this year's coronavirus? And the answer is simply this. Every year we have a flu season, and every year uh, a virus comes and we catch a cold, and there are symptoms that range every year in the flu from simple sniffles or sneezing uh, to actual death. So every year, 0.1% of the population in the United States is actually negatively affected by a flu to the extent that they will actually die. It's a very small population. And it's not a general population, it's a population that primarily consists of older people in nursing care and those people who have health compromising uh, issues in their life that influence their immune system. So it's not the general population that goes to the lethal end of the flu. Most of the population just has symptoms that might be very simple uh, through a respiratory issue. Well, why is this new virus such a problem? And the answer is this. In the annual flu viruses, these are the same viruses that come around every year and are altered from one year to the next by a slight mutation, which then makes them more infective than they were in a previous year. So the significance is conventional flu viruses have been running around in the human population for decades. And so most of us have built up some immunity to characteristics of these flu viruses so that even a mutated virus that will show up next year for the next year's flu will have cross-reactivity with viruses we've already dealt with. So we can alleviate the symptoms of flu by having immunological memory of previous flu uh, infections. What's different in this one is the coronavirus that is now affecting the human population has never been in the human population before, so none of us have any pre-existing immunity to this particular virus. Point, we're all susceptible to getting the virus and having the flu. Yet, something's a little more different about it because without any previous experience, this virus is more aggressive than previous viruses. More people are going to get it, because of lack of previous uh, uh, exposure. And, uh, and as a result, also the symptoms can be much greater. So that we're finding in the current coronavirus, uh, it, symptoms may range from nothing more than sneezing and coughing to full-blown respiratory problems. Now the important part is this, yes, there's always a population that will uh, succumb to this virus. Every year it's 0.1%. This year it's gonna be a little bit higher, why? because there are still people in that same cohort that will get the virus, uh, uh, but have a worse response because of no previous exposure to this virus. So yeah, who are the people that will die from this virus? Well, they're essentially the same group of people that die every year from the same kind of flu virus, and that is those that are elderly and under hospital care or nursing care, and those whose immune systems are already compromised. Point is very simple. 
we're all going to essentially get this virus because we hadn't had it before. A few percent are going to get uh, um, uh, very serious respiratory issues. But let me stop right there for this point because those respiratory issues from the coronavirus are easily treatable by the medical profession. Using ventilators and respiratory drugs, we can handle them. Then the ones who die are still the same group, the same cohort of the immunologically compromised individuals. So for the average person, we will get a flu, no doubt about it. Will we die from that flu? Not if we take care of ourselves, no. So an important insight is this. While we all will be liable to getting the infection, the severity of that infection depends on the health of our immune system. So I said, well, what does that entail us to do? And I say, well, number one, take care of your health. Eat healthy, natural, organic foods to support your biology. Take vitamin supplements and especially vitamin C uh, which is very effective in helping with infections. And more importantly is stop worrying because worrying causes stress and stress releases stress hormones into the body. And the simple fact is this, stress hormones shut down the immune system in an effort to really take the energy of the body and get it ready for fight or flight, running from that proverbial saber-toothed tiger. So basically it says this, stress hormones when released into the body shut down all functions not necessary uh, uh, in running away from a threat. And I say, well, that includes the immune system. I go, absolutely. And in fact, stress hormones are even used therapeutically to shut down the immune system. When doctors are going to transplant an organ into a person, the recipient of the foreign organ is given stress hormones before the operation. This actually inhibits their immune system, so when the graft is made, the recipient's immune system isn't so aggressive in fighting that graft. So stress hormones are therapeutically used to shut down the immune system, and yet when we start to hear the news and the fears and the threats that are keeping bombarding us from uh, the media, we're naturally starting to release stress hormones. And as we release these stress hormones, we compromise our own health. So a very important insight into this thing is this. It is not lethal for almost the entire population, a small percent of the population. And in fact, it looks like right now, less than 1% of the population is going to be affected by this in a sense of dying mortality. So my message is very clear and very simple. Most of us are going to get this virus. That's a fact. Do we have to have extreme problems with this virus? I say no. If we take care of ourselves, as I said, take care of your physiology and your consciousness. Be happy. Stop focusing on the fear, which is self-creating the stress hormones. And more importantly, recognize this. There are many alternative complementary health providers that can help us keep strong and keep our immune system operating. I would actually understand the best thing to do is to go see your chiropractor, your acupuncturist, your naturopath, your massage therapist. All of these modalities are really helping bring health and harmony to the body. And the more health and harmony we bring into the body, the less the symptoms will affect us. So, simple conclusion, if your health is compromised, then do everything possible to protect yourself from getting an infection. But if you're like the vast majority of the population, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and in fact, Take care of the people in your community because what we're starting to recognize now is that health is not being supported by the government. Health will be supported by local community, which is part of our evolution. So if you're not working right now, good. Take care of yourself and see if you can help your neighbors because the more we help each other, the faster we will get through this and the symptomology will be greatly reduced. And as we know, from China and South Korea, whose infections have almost stopped at this point, that this epidemic will come to an end very soon. So, take care of yourself, take care of your health, see your complementary practitioner to ensure you're running really in best form of all, take care of your loved ones, take care of your community, and in the end, we will all get through this, and we'll all make it, and we'll see each other in a much healthier light in the very near future.